Hello everybody, this is Prison Team. Welcome back to Might and Magic 8. So as I said in the previous episode, we are starting to get to the end of the game. However, there is a number of things that we still have to do. Uh, namely, there's still more loot for us to get. And I was thinking about just going through, you know, pretty much all of the areas that I need to loot. Um, we have enough money, so we won't be bothering with, you know, just loot in general. We, however, will be going after artifacts. And there are certain artifacts that always spawn in certain places. And there are also some places that are more likely to give you artifacts. So what we're going to do is we are going to go sort of like step by step through certain dungeons. And for today, I guess we're going to go to the Iron Sand Desert and try to do the... What's it called? I kind of forgot. It's called the... I think it's called like the Lair or something? Or... or oh, I don't know. Something with, with the Cyclops. Uh, the Cyclops' Lair or Vault. Possibly the Vault. And hopefully we're going to get the the troll, well, the best mace in the game there, uh, called, I think it's called Breaker. Um, and I think Breaker only spawns in there or something like that. As I notice, I have waited awake for too long and my people started going weird, so I'm just gonna cure this insanity. That'll be good. I need to rest normally. So yeah. I think we went uh, through all the four planes fairly well. Uh, sure, we didn't do the plane of water, you know, the quote-unquote proper way. Uh, but you know what? We may as well revisit it. It's actually the one, the one plane that I know the least about um, in terms of, you know, navigation and everything. Or just, you know, how many chests and things are there. Interestingly enough, because I never do it. I, I, I mentioned this, but I really, really never do it. It just doesn't seem... I don't know. It doesn't seem like a good idea to try and do it. So let's go. So the thing with Cyclopses is that they have a tendency, or at least the warrior... What are these? Cyclops warriors, yeah. The strongest ones, they do have a tendency to paralyze you. Which is not good. Um, I don't have Cure Paralysis, I think, and you know, getting paralyzed is just annoying, so I'm just gonna keep floating midair and just shooting them, that's the easiest way to get rid of them. Normal Cyclopses aren't really that hard to deal with. Um, the others, well, if they stay out of range, they're, they're just fine. Problem comes when they get into range. So let me see, there's supposed to be a Treasure Cactus somewhere, or Treasure Rock. Is it a treasure rock? I think it's treasure rock or cactus here somewhere. Can't remember which one it is though. Oops, two more cyclopses. So I picked up this habit of going into turn-based combat pretty... well, lately basically. Uh, because on... When I was playing uh, Might Magic 6 just for fun again, uh, I noticed that under the options uh, that that the Greyface patch gives me is the option to speed up the turn-based combat significantly. Like, I don't know, let's say it's 10 times as fast as the regular gameplay. And it's just so good! Because things go really fast that way. Oh, there we go. Oh, and we found a long seeker. Accuracy plus 50, swift and bow skill plus 4. That is the ideal bow to give to my to give to my archer. Or, you know, dark elf. Esper class, but So who's going to get the other one? So it reduces recovery time, attack bonus. I'm going to give it to you because you can still become an expert in bows. Also has a good enchantment. This one has increased weapon speed. This one has fire damage. Fire damage. And again, fire damage. And I'm just going to stick with fire damage. Thank you. 
Okay, so that is one thing we already got. Longseeker. That is nice. I like Longseeker. Longseeker was always kind of cool for me. Looks cool as well. And I think I just remembered what the um, what the dungeon we are after is called. I think it's called the, the Cyclops Larder. Um, now, I'm not sure since I'm not a native speaker, um, I'm not sure what a larder is exactly. Um, but it sounds like something one would keep their food in. <laughs> I don't know why, it just has that ring to it. So I'm just doing this for the experience because, well, if we wanted to go to the plane between planes like this, I I don't think we will, we would, you know, pretty much, well, I don't think we would have a good time. Uh, that is the most difficult place in the whole game, if I'm completely honest. Interestingly, interestingly enough, or, um, let me let me explain this a little bit better. So to get to the plane between planes, you need to go through the crystal. And once you get to the end of the crystal, you get access to the plane between planes. This is you know a minor spoiler alert, I guess, but not really. So oh, nice increased value. I'm gonna be taking that one, even though even though I don't really need it. <laughs> um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah. So to get to the plane between planes, you need to go through that crystal. And interestingly enough, the the plane between planes is actually fairly easy in terms of monsters and everything, whereas the crystal is really hard because it has, well, it has certain mobs in that I really, really dislike. And we'll get to meet them, well, eventually, pretty soon actually, but you'll see, you'll see what I mean. That's an empty cauldron, or maybe I actually already drank from it. So yeah. Okay, Cyclops Larder. That was actually correct. Let me just go into turn-based mode. So what do we have? Is there is that a warrior behind you? Or just two normal Cyclopses and eh, two hunters. Might as well kill them first. Just so something doesn't happen. And I'm going to cast R of Power once more. Because I wanted that sweet, sweet haste on me. Hm. Hello! So there's a warrior there. That reminds me, I still don't have divine intervention. Which is, well, kind of bad actually. I really want divine intervention, it's a really good spell. Oops, I think I'm getting attacked from behind. Whoa! Like two warriors. Oh, and I got and I got paralyzed. See, didn't even notice. But the the thing I hate about paralysis is that you don't get the you don't get the experience with the character that's paralyzed, and it's sometimes it's really difficult to notice that you're actually paralyzed. You basically notice it because your character doesn't have a turn ever, so that crystal doesn't actually pop off, or just you know turn green or whatever you want me to say. And yeah, it's one of those things I really hate. Um, one of the monsters I hate most in Might Magic in general are the ones that can paralyze you in pretty much any Might Magic. That and the instant death, you know, monsters are they're just not fun. They're not made of fun. So wait, I know there's something here. How do I access it? Is there a button I can use somewhere? There should be a button somewhere. Oh, there we go, a lever. Okay, excellent. And we go down here. Do I have to turn? Yeah, I have to turn. Here we go. A journal scrap. Oh, I think I, we also get something for our... I think we also get a quest. Ooh, nice! A quest item here that has to do with uh, that has to do with the vampire promotion. So that's another good thing, I guess. So in these cells, these cyclopses are keeping the humans that they you know then eat. 
Uh, and oh, I got paralyzed again. Doesn't matter at this point. So it's a normal sun hammer and an elven long spear. Less part and the remains of Corbu, which is the item that I mentioned. And no breaker this time, unfortunately. So I guess I'm done with this one. I'm gonna go back to Ravenshore, actually. Or well, where's the closest? I think this has the closest church, actually. And then we're gonna go back to Dragon Sand because, well, that didn't take a long while, and hopefully. We're strong enough to take on another dungeon, which again has the option of giving us quite valuable items. I just need to find it. But I think these are the only two dungeons in this uh, area. Well, okay, we do have the... Well, no, there's actually three dungeons plus the Plane of Fire. Now that I think about it, just tagged this uh, obelisk quest. Because in Might and Magic 7, I actually forgot about the Obelisk quest. We're gonna go here now, the Chain of Fire, which is the... Well... Which is the way that you would normally get to the... To the place with... Uh, Plane of Fire portal. Well, we basically just flew there. So these Ember Gogs aren't a problem, but these fire lizards can be a very big problem because I think they also have like fireball and things so don't underestimate them if you uh, plan on going this way I'm not entirely certain but okay I'm safe here so if you go out here you basically go and get to this place or so you're supposed to go from here to here to get you know like to the chain of islands and then you're supposed to hop through these islands and go into the plane and that is if you don't have flight um, so I guess that's nice but you know you can just run on lava at the expense of some health not that I did it but it's possible but there is also a fairly valuable chest here which I will try and grab some mute salamanders and lizards and gogs. Now you need to be really really careful here because this whole place is completely packed with traps is what I wanted to say as I get a trap in my face. So I'm gonna try and jump probably into the lava, get the loot and get out. There we go. And we got Harold's boots. Speed plus 30, swift, and immunity to sleep. Who's, who could use swift? Probably going to be either the champion or the dark health patriarch. We'll see. I'm just going to put him, put it to the person that has the least amount of... Uh, ooh, increases the effect of all water spells. Nice. Speed plus 16. Now at this point, I really don't need stat points. Staff of elements. Those are... Now that's two... Those were two uh, artifacts in one chest. And we are nearly done with the... The Iron Sand Desert, actually. So the Staff of Elements is really good because it gives you of... Air, Fire, Water and Earth magic. And it's really good if you use them. Now we have water already. Oh, and the Ring of Fusion is already of water, so might as well give this one to my Dark Elf Patriarch. Or to Cory, whatever you want to call uh, them. So who needs regeneration? So I'm guessing you don't have regeneration on your items yet, Mr. Mr. Troll, but... You do already have, like, Grandmaster Regeneration, so I don't want to waste it on you. Well, I say waste. It's not really a waste if you have Regeneration, but... Regenerate Spell Points, Regenerate Hit Points, okay, so we don't need it. Resistant to Stone, Might, something... 
fire resistant to snow. Do you have anything? Regenerate spell points? Okay, so it doesn't regenerate hit points. So I'm gonna give this one to you. That's gonna be good, and let's see who has the least amount. Yeah, unsurprisingly, the Dark Elf has the least amount of of armor class, so that's good, that ends that. And now we're gonna go to the last dungeon. And hopefully get some more artifacts there. Hopefully I get some good artifacts. I really, really want Breaker for my uh, troll because that is the best item I can wield. And nothing really comes close uh, unless I get a really, really good, you know, non-artifact mace. Which in my case would probably b probably be, you know, a mace enchanted with the of the dragon property. But anyway, this is the last dungeon that I want to do here. And surprise, surprise, there are a lot of dragons. So I'm just going to check whether or not there are... Yeah, so there are great worms there. And thankfully only hatchlings and young dragons there. So I'm going to focus on this uh, particular group. What do we have? We have dark fire, that's good. And do we have dragon breath on quick cast? It's going to be good as well. We should be strong enough to survive this uh, well, encounter. That, oh, that was a really good hit. That was a really, really good hit. So I'm just gonna pound them. I'm getting quite good hits on them. And I just realized that I forgot to get uh, regeneration on my guys. Which isn't good. But we're still good for now. So the only problem is going to be when the Great Worms and I think they're called the Dragon Flight Leaders actually get close to me. Um, because of all the mobs here in this place, those are the only two that do not have a ranged attack. They do, however, have a very, very strong physical attack. Or melee attack. I'm just gonna cheese this one. That's a young dragon. It's not a valuable target. Now what's good is um, dragons and great worms and all these lovely things have a chance of dropping an artifact. Um, however, it does need to be either a dragon, a great worm, or a dragon flight leader to get the role. But you know, wow, that is nice. I'm not going to use it though because I have the supreme plate. But you know, I guess it's still useful. So I'm probably going to have to fight. You know, up close and personal with the rest of them, so I'm gonna cast my regeneration here. There we go. Now let's just pull these guys here. Okay, so we have a great worm. What was there behind you? A dragon, good. So this great worm is gonna approach us sometime tomorrow, possibly. You can see that they actually have an absurd amount of armor class. I mean, Rohani has a Grandmaster level in archery. She shoots two bolts and the damage doesn't seem to be piling up that much. Okay, I'm not going to cheese it because that's just boring. And that is the furthest up that I can uh, that I can look so okay so the great worm is down the dragon's left and the dragon's down excellent plate armor ring and cloak so as you noticed um, this is what happens when you pick up certain mobs um, basically you pick them up 
You want to loot them and their corpse doesn't disappear, which means you can loot them again. And that basically has the effect of you being able to save before you, you know, loot a uh, monster. And after you, let's say just, uh, let's say you then loot and if the if the corpse doesn't disappear, you can then quick save again, and then you can just repeat that indefinitely. So in that way, for example, you can, let's say, leave the Emerald Island uh, in Mind Magic 7, which is the first island, you start on it. It has a red dragon, and you can actually leave that island with, like, you know, late game artifacts and late game gear on all of your characters, if you're patient and lucky enough, of course. Um, so yeah, um, that is one thing you can do if you want to really, really cheat in the game. Um, I decided not to because I think, you know, you get plenty of items and drops anyway, if you know where to look for them, of course. And if you know how to approach, you know, getting said things. But yeah, that is a thing you can do. Uh huh? Two-handed axe volcano. Okay, so I guess this is the best axe in the game. It's two-handed. Um, and Minotaurs can't use... Oh, and that's Havoc! Nice! Speed 70, Accuracy 70, Armor Class minus 20, but it has good damage, so we're gonna see if... Uh, if I can use it on my... Karen Sandy. Can't use that. I already know it, probably. I'll, I'm gonna see if I can use that on my... Dark Elf. So, my damage is a bit better, but I don't get the enchantment. How's the recovery time look like? Recovery is the same. You know, I, I'm actually gonna keep this one. Sorry, Havoc. You just have... You're just not good enough, unfortunately. Um, so that's it, I guess. And unidentified boots of magic. Okay, so that's good. And if you really wanted to, you know, be completely overpowered, Flam Drang here also wants to join you. Another dragon. You can get four dragons in this game as hirelings. And they are very strong. Unsurprisingly. They basically have the ability to... Or how they work is they can't equip weapons or armor. But each time you level up their dragon skill. Which is basically the same as, you know, the dark elf ability or the... Um, or the vampire ability. It's a racial ability. Um, they basically get a permanent 1 to 11 damage. And they are innately a ranged attacker without any items. Which means that if you have a Grandmaster Dragon, it means that you hit, I think, so from 11 to 121 damage. And the thing is that their ranged attack actually functions like a spell, which means that if the animation hits, you hit. Having four of them, and usually by the end, because they have no other skills that they need to level, like magic skills and... Well, I guess you can use miscellaneous skills on them, but... Um, they don't have, like, uh, armor skills and stuff. Uh, you basically end up with dragons that deal, like, 400 damage per hit and they can't miss. Uh, so, yeah, it's completely balanced. And their dragon ability also enables them to learn how to fly. What else? Um... Oh yeah, and they get a fireball. Well, it's actually stronger than a fireball. It's actually... It's actually just a bit weaker than fire blast, but it's a lot cheaper and they can pretty much spam it. Um, so yeah, uh, dragons, good. Dragons, good. If you want to use them. They feel a bit cheaty though, to be completely honest with you. Um, so I never use them myself. Unless I get really bored and just, you know, use dragons <laughs> to play a game. <laughs> In which case, yeah, it's always fine. I think my first playthrough when I was little was actually a Dark Elf and then four dragons, and it was awesome. I just felt so proud of myself. But then I actually realized that all of the classes can get really, really good at certain points in the game, so... Yeah, not necessary, but you can still use them. Anyway, rant over. Uh, might as well use these. How are my skills looking? I'm gonna go to Shadow Spire. Because they can train us for sure. 
and they will train us. Train us, they shall. Assassin School. Wow, I got a lot of levels. These are basically the levels I got off of the off of the um, well, what do you want to say? The key quest, and now that I was in the Dragon area and everything, I also got that one, so... Okay, I'm gonna get the reduced recovery time, just for fun. And... Put all your stats into Arms Master until you have, like, 20, and then I'm gonna give you some bodybuilding. So that's gonna be it for you. What I'm gonna do with you, hmm? What should I do with you? So I'm gonna give you... First, I'm gonna master all of these, I guess. Okay, that's good. And then might as well give you Arms Master. Oh, brilliant. I just I hit zero skill points. That is nice. That is always good to see. I'm gonna give you 10 meditation and I'm gonna give you don't need alchemy. You don't pretty much don't need anything else actually. So I'm just gonna give you probably gonna go with light magic. Um, and that's gonna be it. I guess I would need body magic for like power heal, but I don't need that that, that much, uh, at least not at this point. And I don't need identification because I'm already good enough with all my items. I need 10 meditation and then dark magic for damage output and that is it. Whew, that was a lot. So that's master dark magic. I'm looking for meditation actually. I think he's somewhere here. I mean, he's certainly somewhere in Master of Learning. He's certainly somewhere here in uh, in Shadow Spire, but I don't know whether or not he is a master teacher of meditation or a grandmaster teacher of meditation. It could be that the master teacher of meditation is actually in Murmur Woods and the grandmaster teacher is here, but we'll see. Dirthmoor, grandmaster teacher meditation, Gretchen never move, Temple of the Sun. Yeah, so I was right about that one. Both are experts, so I guess we would need to go to the Murmur Woods, but we're gonna go there sooner or later. So that can wait, because meditation is just, you know, pure spell points. Anyway guys, this has been me clearing out the Iron Sand Desert, and we're going, con going to continue next episode, probably with Shadow Spires, since we're here for, you know, so much. Uh, and then we're gonna see where we're gonna go next. In any case, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you here next episode. Bye, guys.